Good morning. Good morning. Siblings in Christ, we know that the earth and all that dwell on it belong to the Lord. As we gather today, our congregation would like to acknowledge that we are on the unceded traditional land of the first people of Seattle, the Duwamish people, as well as the Salish people, past and present, and honor with gratitude the land itself and the Duwamish and Salish tribes. Blessed are you, God of creation. You fashion the rhythms of the planet and send water to nourish all life. The mightiest oceans and smallest streams glorify you. We praise you for the gift of water. We praise you for abundant waters. When we lose our way, you revive us and remind us of our place in creation. Through the life and death of your Son, Jesus Christ, born of water, we are drawn anew into your sacred rhythms. We praise you for the gift of baptism. We praise you for abundant blessings. Breathe your spirit into everyone gathered here and into all who yearn for hope. Strengthen us for lives of passionate justice and bold peacemaking, fed and watered by your merciful presence. We praise you for abundant mercy. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Hopefully for some of you, uh, I mean, hopefully for not too many of you, this is the first time you're feeling heat in a building, uh, or isn't the first time you're feeling heat in a building. Whatever I'm trying to say, hopefully you have power back at home. <laughs> I know a few folks still don't, but uh, we got power back at about 9 o'clock last night here, according to the alarm system, so it's nice to have that little thing that says, oh, the power's out, or the power's back, or whatever, right away, and lets me know, so I was like, whew. Apparently somebody was going to call me and say she thought it was a bad idea to have church here. I didn't say who. If you want to laugh at yourself, that's okay. But <laughs> We spend together a moment dwelling in God's grace. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, host at every table, companion of the suffering spirit of resurrection life. 
Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Apologies, the slides didn't have this in it, and the bulletins do, so if you don't have a bulletin, get close to someone who does, so you can follow along in the bulletin. I updated the slides, but because we don't have internet and it's running through my phone, it's taking a little while to get the update over to the screen, so. Find a new friend, follow along on a printed bulletin, we'll be good. I was just glad I didn't have to plug the copier into my car to print the bulletins this morning, because that's what I thought I might have to do. Deanne's getting bulletins for everybody. Anyone else need one? Deanne's got some. God of letting go, we confess that we fill ourselves with empty riches while our neighbors starve. God of the cross, we confess that we grasp for dreams of wealth and reject your path of sacrificial love. God who knows our pain, we confess that we become numb or grumpy when you invite us into compassion. God who saves, feeds and heals. We repent of setting the table too small. We will lament our habits of scarcity and distress. We renounce the lures of prosperity and seek your reign of joy and peace. People of God, we are both sinners and saints, but God's table is set for all creation. In Jesus Christ, all our sins are forgiven, all our fears are cast aside, and all our neighbors are fed. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Praise the Holy Spirit who gives us abundant life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And I invite you to share a sign of peace, welcome, and greeting with one another. Unless you made other arrangements. Okay, I mean, I could do it if you don't. Oh.
Let us pray together as connected members of the body of Christ. Come, Lord Jesus, and be both our guest and our host. Bring your reign of joy and peace to birth among us. Gather us to your endless crowded table where you have set a feast of mercy for all creation. For you are Alpha and Omega, beginning and end, King and friend, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated, and those who want to go for story time can go out with Ms. Jane. She's going to the lobby <clears throat> and uh, has a story to share with you this morning. The rest of us will hear some other stories from scriptures. A reading from Daniel. As I watched, thrones were set in place, and an ancient one took his throne. His clothing was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was fiery flames, and its wheels were burning fire. A stream of fire issued and flowed out from his presence. A thousand thousands served him, and ten thousand times ten thousand stood attending him. The court sat in judgment, and the books were opened. As I watched in the night visions, I saw one like a human being coming with the clouds of heaven, and he came to the Ancient One and was presented before him. To him was given dominion and glory and kingship, that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not pass away and his kingship is one that shall never be destroyed. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Revelation. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests serving his God and Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Word of God. Word of life. Thanks be to God.
People rearrange the furniture, they never put it back quite right. The Holy Gospel for this Christ, the King Sunday, Reign of Christ Sunday, comes from the 18th chapter of the Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Pilate entered the headquarters again, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you ask this on your own, or did others tell you about me? Pilate replied, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests have handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom belonged to this world, my followers would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not from here. Pilate asked him, So you are a king? Jesus answered, You say that I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. Grace and peace to you from God, who is the creator of life, from Jesus, the Savior, who loves life, and from our Holy, the Holy Spirit, who is the fire of our lives. Are any of us royal watchers, people who pay a lot of attention to the royal family, who know a whole bunch about what's going on? I am not. Maybe some of you are. You should probably come tell us about what Christ the King Sunday means. You probably have a better idea in some ways than I do. Because I don't think much about the royals of any area, whether in the UK or other places. I remember even when I was much younger and Princess Diana died, I didn't know why I should care. It was all over the news, so I felt like it must be important and maybe I'm supposed to care, but I didn't know why I should. And I assume, I mean, I didn't actually check the statistics, but I assume others in Paris died in car wrecks that day and weren't all over the news in the United States. So I'm not that connected to the whole royalty thing. I think my favorite line about Kings is the one from Monty Python's Search for the Holy Grail. You know, that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you know he's a king? That's enough. You can answer that question in your heads if you know the answer, or ask someone who knows. I didn't vote for him. But we join together with Christians throughout the world on this last Sunday of the church year, as next Sunday we begin the new church year with the season of Advent to celebrate Christ the King or Reign of Christ Sunday. It goes back many, many, many decades, only decades, to about 1925. It's not a, hol a Christian holiday that goes back forever and ever like many of our observances do. It was started by Pope Pius XI in 1925 and moved to its current date, the last Sunday of the church year, only in 1970. That's not that long ago. I was almost born then. Can't be that long ago. And by the late 70s, the Inner Lutheran Commission on Worship, what? Now what are you saying over there? I know. Fair enough. Sorry. And it was, it was adopted into the Lutheran, uh, uh, the amended version of the Roman lectionary, which became part of the Lutheran lectionary, and that included Christ the King. That would have been in, in, the, at, in the formation of the Green Book. So if you grew up with the Red Book, you didn't have Christ the King Sunday. Is that right, Viv? Yep. So it was a new thing 
in, for Lutherans in the late 70s. So even young, you know, less than 1925. But let's go back to the, a little bit to the beginning. Why? Why did the Pope decide we should have a Reign of Christ Sunday? Well, it started with Pope Benedict the 15th, who began as the Pope a month into World War I, and was horrified that as Pope, he wasn't able to broker a peace treaty, was horrified at the millions of bodies piling up across Europe, and wrote, there is no limit to the measure of ruin and of slaughter. Day by day, the earth is drenched with newly shed blood and is covered with the bodies of the wounded and of the slain. When he died in 1922 and was replaced by Pope Pius XI, who declared the aim of his papacy to be the reestablishment of the kingdom of Christ by peace in Christ, it was into this idea and this mission that the Pope was trying to do that he introduced Christ the King Sunday as a way to encourage the church to refocus energy and vision on our true ruler and focus it away from unquestioning fidelity to earthly powers. Hmm. Hmm. Much like other holiday traditions, of course, it didn't come out of nowhere. It came out of this particular part of our history as nationalism and authoritarianism began to arise throughout Europe. In Italy, this appeared as fascism, which took official power in 1922. Its political ally, Nazism, was growing in popularity in Germany. And it was against this political realm that the Pope declared, technically we call it Christ the King or Reign of Christ, but it was the Feast of Our Lord Reigns in Latin. Not a political statement, but a statement that puts all governments and parties on notice. Whatever they may have is always subject to the king, who is Jesus Christ. Now, we have this, we have this collection of readings today, which all lift up different visions from Alpha to Omega, A to Z, beginning to end, of how Christian people have experienced, Christian people and our predecessors have experienced the presence of God or imagined the presence of God. So when we read these kind of fantastical images from Daniel, from Revelation, when we read these, we just have to step back and think, oh, this was Bible time writing CGI. This was the things they could create that would get people's attention. This was Game of Thrones dragons. There's actually a dragon in the Bible. Comes up a little later in Revelation. Dragon wants to... I, I, I also saw some, somebody has put out a t-shirt that, that says, this dragon ain't going to get my baby. It's a reference to Revelation and the battle between the, the, Mary, the mother of Christ, and the evil empire, the Roman Empire, the evil empire, the evil in the world. This dragon ain't going to get my baby. He says he wears it. Nobody ever knows what he's talking about. <laughs> They're images to help us remember the power, the power of God, the power of Christ, the intensity, and also then countered with this image where Jesus stands up to the most powerful ruler he could confront in that place in that day, Pilate. Now, Pilate was not the most powerful person in the world, but he was the most powerful world there and then, most powerful person there and then. And as he asks this question, which we have rendered in, the, uh, in, our, in our translation as, are you the king of the Jews? It's really more of a, you are the king of the Jews. If, if we go back and kind of unpack the language, it's not even really a question. It's more of a commentary on you. Because Pilate's thinking, well, I guess if you're a king, 
then I should kill you. And this doesn't look like it's going to be too hard. But then Jesus doesn't do what Pilate expects. Jesus doesn't challenge him in a direct way, but says, yep, I am. But a totally kind of different king. Totally kind of different king than any king you can imagine. Because you as a king have a complete love of power. And you will make all your decisions based on how can you get more power. More power over people, more power to do things, more power to command, more, 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 more power. But that's not what Jesus was about. And Jesus says, look, if, it, if I wanted to be about power, I could call down lots of power. But that's not who Jesus is. Jesus is a, is a king not with a love of power, but who uses the power of love to impact the world. Jesus is a king who is always there, not amongst the most powerful, not absent from the most powerful, but not necessarily amongst the most powerful, and often with the least powerful, the littlest, the lost, the ones who are left behind, the ones who struggle to find the single coin, Jesus is with them. Jesus is with those who are overlooked by folks who are in power. Some of you may have heard this week of the, the death of Tony Campolo. Tony Campolo was a, a professor uh, at, uh, was it Eastern? Yeah, at Eastern. And uh, he was kind of at least when he was, when I saw him speak, he was your prototypical football coach. A little overweight, a little huffing and puffing, bald, uh, and he would get going on stage and go through more handkerchiefs, just mopping the sweat off his brow than you could imagine. And Tony was known uh, in particular for one story that he'd written in his book called The Kingdom of God as a Party. He had lots of great stories. I saw him speak a number of times. And his story, The Kingdom of God as a Party, is one that reminds us of how Christ is the king. Not a king who rules with power, but a king who is with people, wherever they are. So I'd like to share it now. Tony writes, if you live on the East Coast and travel to Hawaii, you know that there is a time difference that makes three o'clock in the morning feel like nine. With that in mind, you'll understand that whenever I go out to the 50th state, I find myself wide awake long before the dawn. And not only do I find myself up and ready to go while almost everybody else is still asleep, but I find that I want breakfast when almost everything on the island is still closed, which is why I was wandering up and down the streets of Honolulu at 3.30 in the morning looking for a place to get something to eat. Up a side street, I found a little place that was still open. I went in, took a seat on one of the stools at the counter, and waited to be served. This was one of those sleazy places that deserves the name Greasy Spoon. I didn't even touch the menu. I was afraid that if I opened the thing, something gruesome would crawl out. But it was the only place I could find. The fat guy behind the counter came over and asked me, what do you want? I told him a cup of coffee and a donut. He poured a cup of coffee, wiped his grimy hand on his smudged apron, then grabbed a donut off the shelf behind him. I'm a realist. I know that in the back room of that restaurant, donuts are probably dropped on the floor and kicked around. <laughs> but when everything is out in front where I could see it, I really would have appreciated it if he had used a pair of tongs and placed the donut on some waxed paper. As I sat there, munching on my donut and sipping my coffee at 3.30 in the morning, the door of the diner suddenly swung open and to my discomfort in marched eight or nine provocative and boisterous prostitutes. It was a small place and they sat on either side of me. Their talk was loud and crude. 
I felt completely out of place and was just about to make my getaway when I overheard the woman sitting beside me say, tomorrow is my birthday. I'm going to be 39. Her friend responded in a nasty tone. So what do you want from me? A birthday party? What do you want? You want me to get you a cake and sing happy birthday? Come on, said the woman next to me. Why do you have to be so mean? I was just telling you. That's all. Why do you have to put me down? I was just telling you it was my birthday. I don't want anything from you. I mean, why should you give me a birthday party? I've never had a birthday party my whole life. Why should I have one now? Tony says, when I heard that, I made a decision. I sat and waited until the woman had left. Then I called over the fat guy behind the counter and I asked him, do they come in here every night? Yeah, he answered. The one right next to me, does she come in, in every night? Yeah, he said, that's Agnes. Yeah, she comes in here every night. Why do you want to know? Because I heard her say that tomorrow's her birthday, I told him. What do you think about us throwing a birthday party for her? Right here, tomorrow night. A smile slowly crossed his chubby face, and he answered with measured delight, that's great. I like it. That's a great idea. Calling to his wife, who did the cooking in the back room, he shouted, hey, come out here. This guy's got a great idea. Tomorrow's Agnes's birthday. This guy wants us to go in with him and throw a birthday party for her right here tomorrow night. His wife came out of the back room, all bright and smiley. She said, that's wonderful. You know, Agnes is one of those people who is really nice and kind, and nobody ever does anything nice and kind for her. Look, I told him, if it's okay with you, I'll get back here tomorrow morning about 2.30 and decorate the place. I'll even get a birthday cake. No way, said Harry. That's his name. The birthday cake's my thing. I'll make the cake. So at 2.30 the next morning, he was back in the diner. I'd picked up some crepe paper decorations at the store and had made a sign out of big pieces of cardboard that read, Happy Birthday, Agnes. I decorated the diner from one end to the other. I had that diner looking good. The woman who did the cooking must have gotten the word out on the street because by 3.15, every prostitute in Honolulu was in the place. <laughs> it was wall-to-wall -wall prostitutes and me. At 3.30 on the dot, the door of the diner swung open and in came Agnes and her friend. I had everybody ready, after all. I was kind of the MC of the affair, and when they came in, we all screamed, Happy Birthday! Never has a person been so flabbergasted, so stunned, so shaken. Her mouth fell open, her legs seemed to buckle a bit, her friend grabbed her arm to steady her, and as she was led to one of the stools along the counter, we all sang Happy Birthday to her. As we came to the end of our singing, happy birthday, dear Agnes, happy birthday to you, her eyes moistened. Then when the birthday cake with all the candles lit on it was carried out, she lost it and just openly cried. Harry gruffly mumbled, blow out the candles, Agnes. Come on, blow out the candles. If you don't blow out the candles, I'm going to have to blow out the candles. <laughs> and after an endless few seconds, he did. Then he handed her a knife and told her, cut the cake, Agnes. Yo, Agnes, we all want some cake. Agnes looked down at the cake. Then without taking her eyes off it, she slowly and softly said, look, Harry, is it all right with you if I, I mean, is it okay if I kind of, what I want to ask you is, is it okay if I keep the cake a little while? I mean, is it all right if we don't eat it right away? Harry shrugged and answered, sure, it's okay. If you want to keep the cake, keep the cake. Take it home if you want to. Can I? She asked. Then looking at me, she said, I live just down the street a couple of doors. I want to take the cake home and show it to my mother, okay? I'll be right back, honest. She got off the stool, picked up the cake, and carrying it like it was the Holy Grail, walked slowly toward the door. As we all stood there motionless, she left. When the door closed, there was a stunned silence in the place. Not knowing what else to do, I broke the silence by saying, he is a pastor after all. What do you say we pray? Looking back on it, 
Now, it seems more than strange for a sociologist to be leading a prayer meeting with a bunch of prostitutes at a diner in Honolulu at 3.30 in the morning. But it felt like just the right thing to do. I prayed for Agnes, I prayed for her salvation, I prayed that her life would be changed and that God would be good to her. When I finished, Carrie leaned over the counter and said, Hey, you never told me you were a preacher. What kind of church do you belong to? In one of those moments, when just the right words came, I answered, I belong to a church that throws birthday parties for whores at 3.30 in the morning. (laughs) Harry waited a moment, then he answered, No, you don't. There's no church like that. If there was, I'd join it. I'd join a church like that. (laughs) That's the church Christ came to be king of. A church that would show love, and compassion and care to everyone. A church that would live out its faith in the way that Tony Campolo often modeled throughout his life. And even in the last few years of his life, and he did not yet die a young man, I don't remember, I I didn't notice exactly how old he was, but he was probably in his 90s. Am I allowed to say that? Okay. He, he evolved in his own understanding and apologized for his own understanding about the church's welcome for the LGBTQIA plus family. And uh, most recently, some of what he has been published with was some of that evolving understanding and how his wife and kids were so far ahead of him in getting there. Which is a little bit of a disconnect for me because someone who could do this and then couldn't make, couldn't make that step. But... He lived out that kind of a life. He lived the kind of a life that we were called out, we are called to, as followers of Christ the King, who demonstrated power through love, who demonstrated power by loving, who demonstrated the love and the willingness to go anywhere to connect with God's people to be Christ, our King. Amen. Let us stand as we sing.
God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Rooted in God's abundant love for the world, let us pray for our neighbors, the church, and all of creation. Revive our congregations, synods, and national church body to reflect the love, justice, and kinship of your kingdom. Rise up diverse leaders like Justice Faulkner, Yehu Jones, and William Passavant, who we commemorate today, who teach and serve your people. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nourish parched lands and bring relief to flooded places. Protect wildlife habitats and endangered species that the chorus of creation's praise resounds with joy. Be with those recovering from the windstorms this past week. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Grant wisdom to the leaders who govern, legislate, and deliberate on our behalf at all levels of government. Advance your nonviolent reign of justice-seeking love through their work. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Draw near to those who are detained, on trial, or incarcerated. Transform systems of retribution into systems of reconciliation and restoration. Empower activists who advocate for change. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Remind us of your enduring love in all seasons. Guide the planning efforts of worship leaders and volunteers who usher our congregation into a meaningful advent and be with each of us as we navigate the process of selling this worship space and finding a new space. We pray especially this week for Sue Stroop and for Lisa and Greg Sutter and their family. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Walk with us as we walk with one another in faith and join the Northwest Washington Synod in praying for Celebration Lutheran Church Anacortes and their pastor, Reverend Deb Butler, for Nativity Lutheran Church and Cross and Crown Lutheran Church as they celebrate their new ministry under the name Living Hope Lutheran Church in Renton. We lift up in prayer their leadership teams and their pastor, Reverend Heidi Calhoun, and for the South Dakota Synod and their bishop, the Reverend Constance Hagmeyer. Merciful God, receive our prayer. In your eternal presence, the saints sing of your majesty. Join our voices with theirs in praise to the one who loves us and frees us from sin. Merciful God, receive our prayer. We offer our prayers to you, gracious God, trusting in your boundless love for all that you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated and we share our offerings at this time. Do you guys want to get the offering plates? Yeah. Logan, are you going to make an announcement? Hey, we 
set a youth sponsoring a giving tree from Provide Mental Place this year. Um, the tree will be set up next week. It'll be asking for gift cards, I think, and everything will be turned in on the 22nd of December. Do I say anything else? Did I say anything? I don't think so. It's gonna be so fun, guys. So fun. <laughs> I remember a conversation with the uh, director at Vine Maple Place about the Giving Tree, and one of the things that she lifted up was how much thank you. Thank you. Did it get to everybody? Thank you very much. Was how much and how important it was to have gift cards that they could give, particularly to their high school residents, that gave them a chance to kind of experience a little bit of normalcy in life. And so when their friends were like, and, and as the parent of a 13 year old, I can tell you how often this comes up. Can we go to Starbucks? They could be like, yeah, I can go to Starbucks. Starbucks? What, you wanna go to Starbucks? Yeah, that, proving my point. Were you hearing what I was saying, Logan? What I was saying is I remember talking with the staff at Vine Maple Place a few years ago and they were talking about how one of the one of the things they love to receive is different fast food gift cards, Starbucks gift cards and how the teenagers that live at Vine Maple Place really appreciate those because it gives them a chance to be a normal teenager and go to Starbucks because apparently that's what you teenagers like to do. Yeah, I picked up on that. Oh, it's what you like to do too? Yeah, true, did your Starbucks have power or did it go out of power? Oh, that was, that was tough for you, wasn't it? You had to go to Covington, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember a snowstorm some number of years ago and Christy walked over to Starbucks in four foot deep snow or something and got there and there was a sign on the door that it was closed. Chrissy was very sad. Mm -hmm. How do I follow that? Um, next Sunday is the first Sunday in Advent, and I think we're decorating after church. Is that what I've been hearing? Yep. So I just wanted to um, make that announcement. Um, so if you can stay next Sunday after church, um, we're going to voluntold the youth that they need to help carry stuff in. <laughs> and and um, then we can get the decorations up for the church. Thanks. We're also going to have some help from uh, the, the Montessori school as well. They, somehow they told me they bought more Christmas decorations. They had so many more already last year, but they, they seem to really like decorating for Christmas. I invite you to stand as we sing our, sing our offering song, Though the Earth Shall Change. <laughs> surprising grace. You call us to bold acts of kindness and brave gestures of solidarity. Receive and hollow these offerings of our time and treasure. Multiply these gifts so that your reign of plenty and peace may be known by all. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Sounds better. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It 
It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, who enthroned forever at your right hand, intercedes for us as our great high priest, and so with Mary Magdalene and Peter, and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal. Surrounded by evil and bordered by death, we appeal to you, our sovereign, our wisdom, and our judge. We praise you for Christ who proclaimed your reign of peace and promised an end to injustice and harm. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for each of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, the sacrifice of his life and death and the victory of his resurrection, we await with all the saints his loving redemption of our suffering world. Send your spirit on these gifts of bread and wine and on all who share in the body and blood of your Son. Teach us your mercy and justice and make all things new in Christ our King. Through him all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. As we are gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Behold, God is making all things new. Come and take your place in the new creation. You may be seated. We'll commune with two lines, one up each side. I invite you to come forward and take either a, uh, take a piece of bread and a gluten-free cracker, or uh, followed by the red wine or white grape juice. You're welcome to spend a moment in prayer at the altar rail. Please leave your glasses in the baskets at either end. All are welcome at this banquet, for it is, it is indeed Christ who is our host. Amen.
those joining from home with your own elements, know that they, like this, are the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you always in his grace. Amen. I invite you to stand in body or spirit as we pray. Thank you, God, our provider, for this meal of grace. May the mercies we have tasted here make us quick to share and ready to welcome others, as you have welcomed and loved us fully. Let all our tables bear witness to your abundant life, good and gracious God. Amen. May God ever near come close to us in these anxious times and bless our days. May Christ give us faith that even in suffering we are living through not an endless list of agonies, but the birth pangs of a promise tomorrow. And may the Holy Spirit kindle the fire of our hope amidst the gloom and reveal the glory of the risen one. Amen. We sing the King Shall Come. Encourage one another in Christ. Thanks be to God.